Swayam Prabha. Digital India. Educated India. Hi, welcome to the sixth lecture on engineering mathematics once and today we will uh, discuss a limit of functions of two variables. So, today in particular we are talking about now the differential calculus and functions of several variables and uh, bef before I introduce the limits I will also discuss uh, what type of these functions. Uh, we mean for the several variables. So, here first let me introduce you the functions of two variables. So, a function z is equal to f x y. So, it is similar to what we have the function of one variable, but there we consider like y is equal to function of x. So, there it used to be only one variable, but now here the z depends on two variables x and y. So, it is a function of two variables and this is a real valued function of two variables x and y. If to each point x y of a certain part of x y plane which is called the domain of uh, the function and if we assign this value using this rule f is equal to uh, z is equal to f x y to a real value z according to some given rule f x y then we call this function as a function of two variables. So, what is the domain? Domain is basically the set of points x y in the x y plane for which f x y is defined and the range, range is the collection of all possible values of z corresponding to the point x y. So, here we will call these x y as dependent uh, independent variables and z as dependent variable. So, in this situation let us consider uh, the coordinate system of x y and z axis and for example, this is the point in the x y plane denoted by this uh, point here and the coordinate of this point in the x y plane are given by x and y. So, corresponding to this point if we compute this f x y then for instance this is the point here the height of this in along the z axis at this point x y of this function is f x y. So, this is the point here in three dimensional system x coordinate comma y coordinate and the z coordinate which is uh, f x y. So, now if we collect all these points corresponding to the point in the domain we uh, this a uh, surface will be formed. So, this a function of two variables in three dimensional plane here represents a surface. So, this is the function z is equal to f x y which represents the surface in this three dimensional uh, coordinate system. So, now let us consider this example here z is equal to square root 1 minus x square minus y square. So, since this z is real then the argument here 1 minus x square minus y square must be greater than or equal to 0 and this will imply that x square plus y square must be less than or equal to 1. And therefore, we get this domain D which is all contains all the points here in R 2 means both are the real. So, in x y plane where the x square plus y square is less than or equal to 1. So, this is a circular disk here in the x y plane which forms the domain for this function z is equal to square root 1 minus x square minus y square and the range. So, the values of the possible values of z uh, for the points from this domain is the range. So, if we notice here that x square plus y square is less than or equal to 1. So, this value of the square root here will belong to 0 and 1. So, that is the range here all the points z from the 
uh, real axis and where the z is between 0 and 1. So, this is the graph of this function which is uh, the sphere basically the half sphere above part of the uh, sphere. So, here the z axis, the x axis and the y axis. So, this domain here which is uh, the circular disk x square plus y square less than equal to 0 and at each point of this uh, circular disk we have uh, computed the value of z and the surface is plotted. So, this is the uh, interpretation the geometrical interpretation of the functions of two variables. Now, before we move to the limit and the continuity part later on we need the concept of the distance between the two points in in x y plane. So, if we have two points p and q having two coordinates here x 0 y 0 and x 1 y 1 then what is the distance between these two points. So, which we can easily find out if we form this triangle then this here the height will be like y 1 minus y 0 and this is going to be x 1 minus x 0. And now, this distance p q will be the square root of x 1 minus x square and plus y 1 minus y square. So, this is the distance x 1 minus x square plus y 1 minus y 0 whole square and the square root. We will also uh, introduce now the neighborhood of a point p x 0 y 0. So, if a point is given in the x y plane as x 0 y 0 which is denoted by p here, then we will introduce now what is the delta neighborhood of this point p which is usually denoted by n delta p or n p delta. So, here n uh, delta p is given by all the points here x y whose distance from the point x 0 y 0 from the dis, uh, distance from this point p is less than delta. So, naturally now this one here is again a open circular disk which is represented here. So, that is the point p and the radius here is delta and now all the points here in this disk satisfies this relation here. So, this is the neighborhood of this point p. Note that this is an open neighborhood because the boundary is not included. If we include here less than equal to delta then the boundary of this uh, disk that means the circle will be also included in the point here. So, this is the open uh, neighborhood of p uh, with radius this delta. This is the most common definition for the neighborhood, but we can also introduce neighborhood as the square around this uh, point p introduced by the x which lies between x 0 minus delta and the uh, x 0 plus delta y also lies between y 0 minus delta and y 0 plus delta and this is represented by this square here with this half of the side is this delta and the p is the point. So, limit of a function of one variable. So, we recall now before we introduce uh, the limit the concept of the limit for the functions of two variables it is important to first discuss the limit of a function of one variable. And mainly we will now focus on this delta epsilon definition of the uh, limit which is very important to discuss the limit for uh, the functions of several variable. So, here we say for the one variable case that this limit x goes to x naught f x is equal to l if for every epsilon greater than 0. If for every epsilon greater than 0 there exists a delta greater than 0 such that for all x. So, all those x which belongs to this uh, neighborhood of this x 0 implies that the difference between f x and minus this l is less than the given number here l. So, let me just uh, 
explain you this concept with the help of this plot here. So, we have a function f x whose limit as x approaches to this x naught is L. So, this is the point x naught here, this is the point x naught and then corresponding to this, this value is L there. And now, so what this definition says that corresponding to every epsilon, so this could be a very small number or anything, so this epsilon positive that means, which is denoted by this distance here around this L. So, for every epsilon however small, there always exists a neighborhood of this x naught, which is the case here. And now, if we take any x in this neighborhood, so this is the delta. So, if we take any point in this neighborhood now, the value will be or the difference of the value of this f x and minus this l will be less than the epsilon. Yeah, this is epsilon here. So, let me just correct it. This is epsilon. So, that difference will be less than epsilon and this function may not be defined at x is equal to x 0. So, to define the limit of a function at a point x naught, the function may not be defined at this point x naught and therefore, here that x is equal to x naught is excluded. So, in other words we can if we can make the difference this f x minus l, this difference here f x minus l, if we can make this difference as small as we like by considering a small neighborhood around this x naught, then we say that this f x is equal to the limit of this f x naught uh, f x as x goes to x naught is L. So, here now let us take this example that what is the limit of this 3 x plus 1 as x goes to 1 and it is clearly uh, visible here that the limit is 4 in this case and we will prove now using this epsilon delta approach that this uh, indeed is the limit of this function 3 x plus 1. So, what we need to show? We need to show that for a given epsilon that there exists a delta. So, that the x minus 1 less than equal to delta. So, this is the neighborhood or around this 1 delta neighborhood around 1. If we take any point from this neighborhood, this will imply that this difference between the function and minus this 4 is less than epsilon. So, to prove this we will start with this uh, difference here 3 x plus 1 minus 4 which is equal to 3 x minus 3 and then 3 and we have the modulus x minus 1. So, this modulus x minus 1, so all x from this neighborhood satisfies that x minus 1 is less than delta. So, here 3 was there, so less than 3 delta and what is our aim now to make this difference is smaller than the given epsilon. So, if we set here less than or equal to epsilon now, so we get a relation between delta and epsilon for given epsilon we can choose now the delta such that this difference will become less than epsilon. So, what is the relation? The relation is 3 delta less than equal to epsilon. So, if we choose this delta less than or equal to epsilon by 3 for given epsilon, if we choose this delta less than equal to epsilon by 3, then for any given epsilon we have this relation that the difference between this 3 x plus 1 and minus 4 is less than epsilon which we have just seen here this difference is less than epsilon because of this relation we can choose this delta less than epsilon by 3 and then this difference will become less than uh, epsilon whenever for all x from this neighborhood of this one delta neighborhood of this one here. We can see the situation in this plot 
So, this is uh, for instance at x is equal to 1 the value of the function is, is 4 and now you take any neighborhood. So, for example, we have chosen this neighborhood here. So, there exists a delta neighborhood again correspond uh, around this 1 in this case. So, usually when the epsilon is small the delta is also small and when the epsilon is big we can have a big uh, neighborhood around that point. So, for instance here we have chosen a big neighborhood of around this point 4 and then correspondingly this delta is also big. So, all these x in this delta neighborhood uh, satisfies uh, this relation that the difference of this function minus 4 is less than the epsilon. So, what will happen for the non-existence of a limit if the limit does not exist for, for example, in this case as x approaches to x naught the limit whether right or the left is not equal to L and what will happen if we try to get a neighborhood around this L here and whether the corresponding neighborhood around this x naught will exist or not. So, here for example, this is the epsilon neighborhood, but what we see in this case that there is no neighborhood of this x naught whatever small neighborhood you take and any x between this the uh, difference between the function value and this limit will exceed than this epsilon here. So, yeah it is clearly visible that you take any point in this neighborhood here and then the difference between the f x and this l will increase than the given epsilon here. So, in this situation we do not have the possibility that for a given epsilon there exists a delta uh, neighborhood around this x naught. So, for a given epsilon in this situation there does not exist any delta such that this difference f x minus l is less than epsilon wherever this x is from this delta neighborhood. Recall again the existence of the limit was that limit x goes to x naught f x is equal to l and this means that every neighborhood of l. So, every neighborhood which is represented by n epsilon l of l there exists some neighborhood of x naught such that the f x belongs to this neighborhood of l whenever x belongs to the uh, neighborhood of this x naught the delta neighborhood of x naught. So, limit of functions of two variables we will discuss now. So, this is just the continuation of this uh, rather general definition here. So, this x may be uh, a, a point in, in two dimensional plane for example, in x y plane and again this definition will be carried for generalization the uh, definition of the limit. So, for, for example, in this case we take z as f x y a function of two variables which is defined in domain d and let this p x naught y naught be a point in d. So, if for a given real number epsilon however small we can find a del a real number delta such that every point x y in the delta neighborhood of this uh, point x naught y naught it satisfies that f x y minus l is less than epsilon then we will call that this l is a limit. So, what does that mean that this f x y minus l is less than epsilon wherever these x y fall in the delta neighborhood of this x naught y naught. So, if for a given epsilon we can find such a delta then we will call that this L is the limit of f x y. Again the function may not be defined at x naught y naught for the existence of this limit and therefore, we may exclude this uh, uh, that x is equal to x naught y naught. And then this real number L is called the limit of the function f x y as x y goes to x naught y naught. Symbolically we denote again the limit x y goes to x naught y naught f x y is equal to L. 
So, if we take this uh, problem now from this uh, functions of two variable x square plus y square and sin 1 over x square plus y square and this limit is 0. We want to prove that this limit is 0 using epsilon delta approach. So, how do we proceed? Now, for x y not equal to 0 0 because at 0 0 this function is not defined and we consider this difference, difference of the function which is x square plus y square and sin 1 over x square plus y square less than the limiting value is 0. So, if we start with this difference now, this is x square plus y square because this is going to be positive and the absolute value of this sin 1 over x square plus y square. And we know that that this uh, value of the sign always lies between minus 1 and 1. So, this is this quantity is bounded by 1. So, this is less than equal to 1. That means, this difference is less than equal to x square plus y square. And what we know the neighborhood of this 0 0 point because we are taking this limit to 0 0. So, what is the neighborhood of this 0 0 or rather delta neighborhood of 0 0? It is x square plus y square less than square root of this less than delta or x square plus y square less than delta square. So, we can use this inequality there. So, x square plus y square in this neighborhood is less than delta square and we want to set for a given epsilon this difference less than epsilon and we are looking for such a delta which will satisfy that inequality. So, here this difference if we want to make less than uh, epsilon then we can get this relation between delta and epsilon. So, for given epsilon if we choose delta such that the delta square is less than or equal to epsilon then we are done with the limit that this difference is less than epsilon for the delta which satisfies that delta square is less than epsilon. So, here if for a given epsilon if we choose that delta square is less than or equal to epsilon then this difference between the function value and its limiting value will be less than uh, epsilon. So, this here will be less than epsilon will be less than epsilon if we take x y from this neighborhood. So, again just to uh, recall this. So, we have started with the difference between the uh, function value at any point x y not equal to 0 0 and its limiting value and somehow we have to write down this difference in terms of the. So, that we can use this delta inequality from the neighborhood of the x not y not point which is 0 0 in this case. And once we reach to this delta then we can set that this must be equal to less than equal to epsilon because we want to make this difference, this difference here of the function uh, and minus this limiting value less than epsilon. So, out of this difference we can uh, say that for a given epsilon there exists a delta the relation is that the delta square must be less than or equal to epsilon. So, another example where we need to prove that this limit x y goes to 0 0 x y over x square plus y square and the square root is 0. So, in this case again the function is uh, not defined when x y goes to 0 0 because of, of this reason uh, x square plus y square. So, this will become 0, but what we will prove now that this limit is 0. We cannot just directly substitute uh, 0 0 here because this will be like a 0 and then 0 here and there is no such L orbital rule which we can apply in case of one variable we had the L orbital rule and which says that the derivative this limit will be equal to the limit of the ratio of the derivatives. But here, so we cannot substitute this uh, directly the value of x and y in this expression. So, we will prove that this limit is 
0 using again epsilon delta approach. So, we take this x y not equal to 0 0 and we consider again as in the previous example this difference between the function which is x y over square root x square plus y square and minus this limit here 0. And now, so this is equal to the x y divided by the square root of x square plus y square. And now, this is positive. So, we have basically x y the absolute value divided by this x square plus y square. And now, the aim is the same that we want to write down everything in terms of the neighborhood inequality which will be in this case because we have the 0 0 point it will be x square plus y square and the square root. So, we will convert now this <coughs> expression in the form of the x square plus y square. So, we uh, notice here now that if we take this inequality x minus uh, y whole square which is always greater than or equal to 0 because of uh, the square here and then what do we get here x square uh, plus this y square and then uh, minus 2 x y greater than 0, which will imply that this x square plus y square is greater than 2 x y. And then, so here we have x square plus y square greater than, we can take the absolute value. So, uh, here x square plus y square is, uh, is, is positive. So, we have the 2 and the x y is greater than this 2 times the x y and this is greater than the x y. So, in this case we can use this inequality that x square plus y square is greater than the absolute value of x y. Having this relation we can now replace this absolute value x y by the bigger quantity which is x square plus y square and divided by x square plus y square. So, here now we got this x square plus y square and we consider again this neighborhood of this delta which is uh, x square plus y square the square root less than this delta. So, we set that this x square plus y square square root is less than delta at least in the neighborhood of this 0 0 and now we want to set that this difference is less than epsilon. So, again we will use the same idea. So, here it is less than equal to epsilon. So, this expression the difference between the function and the limiting value is less than epsilon if we choose this relation that delta is less than or equal to epsilon. So, for given epsilon if we choose delta equal to epsilon or anything less than epsilon, then the difference between the function value and its uh, limiting value will be less than epsilon. So, for given epsilon we choose delta less than epsilon, then this uh, difference between the function value and the minus the limiting value will be less than epsilon. So, now to conclude. So, we have uh, discussed the functions of two variables mainly z is equal to f x y. So, here x and y they are the independent variables. So, they can take any values and this z depends on the value of the I mean this functional value here. And we have also seen that such functions represent a surface in the x y z plane. We have also discussed the definition of the limit in particular the epsilon delta definition which is very useful to prove somehow that a given number l is the limit. With the help of this epsilon delta approach we cannot uh, just get the limit, but if we have some idea about the limit then this epsilon delta approach may be used to verify that l is the limit because what we will observe now in case of this two variable uh, when we have the functions of two variables, then there are several paths which approaches to a particular pa uh, point in the x y plane and this is 
completely different what we have seen in case of one variable where there were two paths one from the right side one from the left side and we used to get the limit from the right side from the left side and then if they both are equal we say that the limit exists. But now in this case since you can approach to a particular point from the several directions it is not possible to get just the limit along some path because there are infinitely many paths uh, involved in this uh, limiting process. So, this epsilon delta approach will be very useful once we have some idea about the limit and then this value of the limit can be used to prove that this is indeed the limit. So, in the next lecture we will learn more on the limits the evaluation of the limit in particular. These are the references which we have used to uh, prepare these lectures and thank you very much.